You guys are never gonna believe this. The time has finally come. I am finishing up packing right now to go to California because yes, race weekend is here. We are heading out to Tahoe, California to race the Broken Arrow 52K and VK. Let's fly. So we got into the hotel around midnight last night, uh, West Coast time, but you know, we're on East Coast time, so it's 3 a.m. But we got a decent amount of sleep and now we're gonna go stretch, go to the hot tub, get some breakfast and get this day going. So for the VK, I'm going to have two separate bags. One is my drop bag that they are taking up to the top, to the summit, where I can have some warmer clothes because it's going to be a little bit chillier. So in here, I'm going to put a beanie. Always, right? I'm going to get my cookie for a little bit of snack afterwards. A long sleeve shirt and my puffy jacket. And it's my warm up pants to throw on over top of my shorts. So that is done. Now for the bag that I'm taking to the starting line, I am going to have my Houdini in here, my super lightweight jacket, because I might take it. I really don't know what the weather is quite yet. So I'm gonna toss that in, potentially some gloves. These are my poles packed up nicely in here. So I definitely, I'm gonna be using those today. I have sunscreen, squirrels, nut butter, deodorant, all in there. And then the good snacks. I got some chalky milk, a banana, and some Oreos. This is the fuel of champions, guys. Then I have my Yeti full of water because we're at elevation. Some sunglasses. I got my VJ Maxes on today because these shoes are really gripping. I think they're gonna be helpful over uh, that really loose terrain. So those are all coming with me. And, oh, I'm gonna need some fuel too. Good thing I have. I'm gonna take some scratch hydration mix. Um, I'm gonna pour it into this bottle here to give me a little bit of extra hydration. Once again, elevation. It's not a super long race, but might get a little sweaty. And then I'm going to take one spring with me, just in case. I feel pretty full. I don't think I'm gonna need it, but I always just like to have it. And then I'll have a little waistband and that's it. I'm not gonna carry any water um, during the VK with me. I really don't think that I'm going to need it. It's 4.2 miles. It's less than an hour. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm really hydrated beforehand. And I'll show you the outfit as soon as we get there because I'm not putting it on yet. It's too cold. <laughs> I don't know how, but it's almost officially time to run the VK. So we're getting dressed in the car, trying to stay out a little bit of the sun and the wind and uh, <gasps> let's go do this thing.
So I'm pretty happy with the race today. I was able to run a decent amount of it, more than I think I thought I was going to be able to, but there were some sections that were very runnable for me, like um, elevation wise, and I just couldn't, my lungs just started to, <sighs> this elevation, um, the race starts at about 6,000 feet and goes up to around 8,000. So uh, quite a bit of difference from me being at sea level. So uh, that was probably the hardest thing. And I really didn't want to push it because normally in the VK, you go up and you get the gondola ride down, but because the winds were so bad, they were not having the gondola. So we did have to run down the mountain, which was an extra three and a half miles, not crazy, but an extra three and a half miles of downhill that I was not planning on so I knew that from the start so I really didn't want to push it too too much and now it's 8 p.m I'll go show you what I'm going to be packing for the 52k tomorrow because I gotta eat dinner and then go to bed so I fully admit I'm a bag lady through and through I'm happy to own that I'll give you an up close and personal of this in a second but <clears throat> essentially I'm going to have this drop bag at the 26k mark so we do two laps of the 26k course that's really a little bit shorter this year but i'm going to have this here it's going to have all of my fuel in it so it has my hydration mix spring which will be on the course but um it's my favorite so i'm going to have it this um Solomon bottle here actually has one of the hydration packs in it already so that i can get in i was going to fill it up with water but I just, I want it to stay cold. So then I have my scratch chews. These are really good and some more spring. And this is actually all labeled for my first 100 miler, Havelina. So I don't have any lights in here. I just have an extra bottle, two extra bottles. I'm going to be starting with my, whoo, here it is, my bib. I got to put that on tomorrow. Um, in first aid, what do we have in here? Oh, just some squirrels nut butter for a little bit of chafing. I'll put some on before the race, but, um, I want to have some in there. Is there anything for the trees? Wow, that's kind of it. This is a little bit of a low profile at the moment because it's going to be cold at the start. Probably around 30-ish degrees. Um, so I'm going to be taking a lot of my clothes to the start. Originally, I thought that I was going to drop extra clothes in here, um, so that when I need them, but I'm going to start with them. And then when it gets warmer, I will have this bag to drop like my gloves and then potentially one of my jackets I might take two with me or I'll have my arm sleeves with me. So I might drop them in here. I don't think I'm going to need extra shoes <clears throat> or socks. The course is just so dry that it's... I'm not really wearing out the shoes, I'm not getting them wet, whatever. So I'm going to have that and that's all I am bringing with me. Ignore the mess. Here's the fit for the day. We have John G top and bottoms here. I'm going to link everything that I've been wearing this whole time in the description below. And I'm wearing my Dina fit 100s today. Still pretty new, um, a little bit cushier than the other ones. I'm also going to have my arm sleeves on today and and that's it arm sleeves and uh, a little jacket because uh it's about 40 degrees right now so we're a little chilly but we're gonna have some waffles and then we're gonna go three hours and 17 minutes hoping for a sub seven hour race just gonna do this uh, one more time uh. Head all right i'm dropping my phone in my bag i'm heading out for the second lap i will catch you guys at the end We're done. I'm tired. Let's go home. 
So obviously I didn't go home right away, but I am home now and I'm ready to talk about lap number two. That's where I left you guys off. You saw some footage of me that my friends took going out on lap number two. Man, those hills were killer the second time around but you know luckily I took it easier on that first lap didn't want to overwork myself the elevation really started getting to me my chest felt super tight I was downing water as fast as I could my lips started getting really chapped and it was just oof, really really tough but so much fun to be back in California back running those trails um, there was a little clip that I actually have here because it did start snowing and hailing for a couple minutes um, that was truly a wild experience out there but hey you know just makes for a good story later right we were able to spend day three of the race spectating the 26k which was just such a great experience and to get to see all of our friends race we got to chill by the pool, eat all of the food. We did a little shakeout run while we were cheering for everyone. So all in all, a great experience out there. And it was really nice to not have to just jump right on the plane and sit for a very, very long time flying from California back to Maine. So I am home now and legs are definitely still a little sore. My upper body is really kind of tight just from carrying the pack around for so long. My you know chest kind of feels like it wants to cave in a little bit. So I'm working on doing all those stretches back there and getting myself back and ready to go for my next adventure, which uh, keep tuning in and you will surely see soon.